Hello everybody, this is Dren608. The game is Unconditional Surrender, published by GMT Games, designed by Salvatore Basta. I am going to replay for you a vlog of a game that I uh, played just a couple of nights ago. The Western Allies, as you can see on the screen here, did a wonderful job in September of invading. Uh, they brought the 5th U.S. Army into Cherbourg. First Canadian landed there, killed a, <coughs> killed a garrison unit to end up where it is. The 8th Army invaded next to Le Havre. BAF kicked me out of Brest. I'm the Germans in this case. So we were going into October. And right there is the weather die roll. Everything is fair. This is a cautionary tale to those Western allies, the wannabe Eisenhowers and Montes that think that they can invade with impunity. <coughs> this is to show you the German counteroffensive that can happen. To set the stage real quickly, um, you'll notice that the Russians aren't engaged with the Germans. It's because I collapsed Russia. There is no Mediterranean war. They never could. I never could get Italy to join. There was a threat of um, Turkey joining still because of the diplomacy thing with Russia collapsed. That's why there's a British Air Force and an in, uh, armor uh, garrison unit kind of sitting here in case Turkey activates. They needed to slow me down while they invaded Europe. So, with that weather die roll, we proceeded on. Uh, he threw his partisans in, in the war. Um, I think I threw his subs. I lost a factory. <coughs> I strategically moved. And now we're going to Axis Operations phase. This is where things start getting a little bit interesting. So you'll notice that with the range of the second Luft sitting in Stavanger, that it can reach hex 2714. That's important. You'll see why in a moment. So I moved it to there. Next thing I did is I moved this airplane to there. And then I moved that airplane to there. Now, the Germans dropped their surprise attack marker in... I'm going to zoom in here. <coughs> into uh, 31... whatever that is. 09, I think that is. And we go on. Then I take my airdrop marker and I drop it on the first Canadian. I activate the 4th Panzer. He starts off at plus 5 because he's plus 4 for the armor in German and plus 1 for the surprise attack marker. And the Defender starts off at plus 3, but then he's minus 2 for the airdrop. Oh, come on, Vassal. I activate that air unit that I brought down from Norway. He flew his aircraft in Southampton. He did very good on his die roll. He kicked me out. So I couldn't... Was not included in the battle. So he was at a 3. I rolled a 6 with my plus 5, which was an 11. Rolled a 2, which was a 5, which uh, was a DD result. So he flipped his unit and retreated him into Southampton. And then his naval evacuation marker. So I took the hex. Then I immediately set off to attack the Americans in Cherbourg. Vassal uh, is not liking me here. go. So then I flew the one that had four sorties on it. He chose not to fly his bomber. I rolled a five 
uh, he rolled two dice and we said take the first one, which was a four. So he got flipped. Then I attacked again. Boy, oh boy. <sighs> Flew a different airplane. Had an attack die roll modifier up to an eight. Um, that was because I was plus two for power pans or plus two for armor and German. So that's plus four, plus two because he's isolated. That made it plus six, plus seven for surprise attack marker. 8-9 for the airplane, and then minus 1 for the city. He started off at uh, plus 1, did not fly an airplane, and was eliminated. So his fleets had to go away. And he took them all the way down to uh, where his American airplane is in Gabe's. That's why it jumped down there. And I took the hex and then backed out. And said, okay... The next attack was to take this garrison unit, move it there. Took this infantry unit, moved it there. Called an assault. Uh, <clears throat> plus two for infantry, plus two for isolation, plus one for a buddy. Plus one for a surprise attack, minus one. So I'm at plus five when we start. He's at plus one. I threw in my heavy artillery, he threw in a tanks. I threw in an airplane, he threw in an airplane. And then I rolled a 5, <clears throat> plus my ridiculous amount. Um, he rolled a 6. Or actually, no. That was our aircraft, the 5-6. And then I only rolled a 2, but he rolled a 1. But a 2, plus all my die roll modifiers... Uh, which was like up to a plus nine. Flipped him. I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm hitting the wrong button. Then I attacked with just the infantry unit. Oh lord. Terrible time here. I was two plus two plus two for the tanks was plus four. I threw in the airplane as well. Um, he did better on his sorties this time. Knocked me down for two, but I still got in. And then my three plus uh, six was a nine to his grand total of a six, which is all I needed to force him to retreat, which forced him to actually become eliminated. Uh, then I rolled a five and a one. So he was eliminated. His fleet went off to... Never, never land. Then I started attacking the 8th Army. Threw in another airplane. Um, you'll notice my attack die roll minor for hours is still at a 6. He had gotten two sorties on me, but I still got in. So now I was up to a seven total. Eight. And he went up to a five, four and a four. That was a big enough split that it forced him to be flipped because he couldn't retreat. And then I played some mind games with him. God. 
the replay button is not working real well here. And I just, um, he flew a sortie, but I chose not to fly any airplanes. Um, he ended up at a total of plus three. I was plus six because he's isolated. Five to a four was enough for me to force him to retreat, which forced him to die. And that, dear friends, is that. I flew my airplane back out of harm's way, and that one went back to Stavanger out of harm's way. So I still got my plus one for Stavanger. I got my plus two for breast back for the next strategic warfare. Um, he gets off a bunch of bombing attacks and things. I'm not going to play this any farther. But this is, an, like I said, it's a cautionary tale. When you're coming across with the British and the Americans, he did it right. Mostly British do the initial attack because they have more airplanes at this point. But you really need to make sure that you, you really need all three British fighters and the British bomber. The British fighter, or the American fighter and bomber. They all need to be within range of wherever you're landing your troops. So that you basically need to have, as my friend likes to call it, God's own air force. To try and stop this kind of German counterattack. As you saw, two panzers, two infantry and a garrison killed four, well, three units, two British and one American, and then also forced a, the first Canadian here to go, um, you know, be flipped and retreated into Southampton. Now that means I don't have to worry about him doing anything till like April of 1944, which the Russians will be coming in here in the winter of 44, and so then I can concentrate on trying to do a proper defense over here. And I do move a bunch of this stuff around. But I thought you might find that interesting. Um, sort of a short little instructional video. One for the Germans. How do you kick, how do you stop the West invasion? And two for the Western allies. Make sure you do your invasion correctly. Even doing it correctly like this. A few good German die rolls. And you could end up losing the invasion. Uh, Eisenhower's nightmare scenario. For me, if I was coming across in September like he did, I would have probably evaded uh, like he did to take Brest, but my second invasion would have been the Hex uh, north, uh, north, southeast, northeast 3007 to attack the garrison unit and put a unit in front of Brest so it would not be isolated. It prevents, it's a less likely attack for the Germans to be able to to push you out of Brest. And then maybe if you really wanted to use the third one, go ahead and attack at Cherbourg just to have a unit there. It would have looked a little bit odd maybe, but it would have been, I think, a better defense. Nothing's going to stand against this kind of counterattack from the Germans. The reason why this is so very possible for my Germans is because I did collapse Russia. So I have a full German army to play games with like this. Um, the fact that I don't have to do send anything off to Italy to keep him from running up the boot or uh, constantly fighting in Russia makes this a huge difference. Uh, one of the things that you can see is like the Germans, after I did all that, I still had 27 points left to, to mess around with. So um, the Germans are at... Uh, Oh, my factory loss marker should have been up at, up by one. Um, but you can see I'm I'm doing well in as far as strategic warfare goes. Um, British and Americans were a little bit cautious early in '43. I would have probably risked more than what they did. But uh, <clears throat> he was so worried about things like Italy jumping in the war, and I did have a chance uh, for a while. In '43, I had like a one in eight chance. Of, or maybe it was a two and nine, I'm not sure. Chance of getting Rome, uh, you know, getting Italy in. I drew a no event, they drew a pro and took the pro marker right out of Rome. So that kind of shot that in the foot. Um, and then 
I still had a pro marker in Turkey, but I never I couldn't pull the political success, so I couldn't activate Turkey. Either one of those would have foiled this whole invasion in France here. You would have been fighting in the Mediterranean for a little bit. So just so you can see how it's done, that's the way it works. Um, as the Western Allies, you do have to try to do the invasion. Um, I try to do it like he did in September, if you can, with a couple of units. Um, if it had been me, I probably would have gone for um, Brest, adjacent to Brest, pushed the garrison unit, and then attacked at Nantes as well. Those would have been my three invasion hexes, so that if I can get Nantes, Nantes here, if I can push his infantry out of there, now the these units back here, he's got to kill this unit before he can get to those units. Which means I have a fair chance of actually maintaining myself in the Brittany Peninsula. Um, he did pick the right time. There was a one-third chance I could fair weather. Um, if he gets a couple poor weather turns, then he can pretty much establish himself in Brittany. And it'll be much harder for the Germans to kick him completely off the continent. And he'll have his surprise attack markers in the summer of 44, when the Germans can try to do it again. So... Something to be aware of. Do not despair. You'll be able to invade again. Um, if you're lucky, you can pretty much pull off an invasion somewhere around March or April and then have the surprise attack markers again at the end of the summer to, to do it again if you need to. Um, that's it. Just thought that you all might find that uh, interesting, instructive, how the Germans can kick the allies off the continent when they invade. Uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Leave me comments. Uh, I do read them, probably not as quickly as I should, but I do read them and respond to them. And this is Gen 608. Uh, until we meet again, this is bye-bye, and please be safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.